I'm here with uh, Dr. Tim Glennie, interventional cardiologist. Hi, Tim. Hi, Patricia. Right, so you're going to tell us about the ischemia trial, and what is this trial about? So the ischemia trial was um, published earlier this year in the New England Journal, and is one of the key trials probably of the year, been quite widely anticipated amongst the cardiology fraternity. It was a randomised trial that looked to compare an invasive strategy um, with invasive revascularization, be that PCI or bypass surgery, with a medical strategy in the setting of stable coronary disease. Um, the decision around what sort of revascularization was performed was, was governed by the local um, trial participants in a heart group setting um, and a mixture of both revascularization revascularization strategies were performed. So what are the key messages from the trial? So it's been interesting and it was it was clearly a difficult trial to enrol for. They screened around 26 and a half thousand patients um, to finally uh, randomize two and a half thousand patients to each arm. Um, all of the patients had a functional test with either stress test um, uh, just with a treadmill or a stress echo. Some of them had stress MRI uh, or perfusion scanning done, and 75% of the patients had a CT coronary angiogram done. So they were all quite well worked up for causes of chest pain right from the outset. Um, the, there were some key exclusion criteria which um, involved significant left main stem disease, ejection fractions of less than 35%, recent infarcts, um, uh, heart failure, um, and so none of those patients are relevant in the trial setting. Um, and their key outcome related to fairly traditional cardiovascular events with cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, um, admissions with heart failure or angina, uh, or sudden cardiac death. Um, and the, the key message from the trial really, um, despite the fact there are limitations, which we'll talk about in a minute, was the fact that there isn't really a difference between an early invasive strategy and a conservative medical strategy in this group of patients. Um, there were slightly more procedural myocardial infarctions in the invasive group, um, but there were also more traditional myocardial infarctions in the conservatively managed group. Uh, and the interesting thing is, is how the curves were separating towards the end of the trial period. Um, We've only had 3.2 years as a median follow-up at this point, and even at that point there is some hint that the trial uh, outcomes are starting to separate in favour of an invasive strategy, but certainly it's not significant at this point. Right, okay. And the main difference in terms of the uh, patients that they recruited is the fact that in this particular trial they make sure everyone's on good modern medical therapy. Uh, that's the yeah. main difference compared to the earlier yeah, ones so that... So certainly that's right, and so certainly they were all on good doses of um, statin, aspirin, um, smatterings of beta blockade and ACE inhibition, um, and they were well matched between the groups. So certainly you could not say that these patients weren't appropriately medically treated in right. either arm. Right, okay, yeah. and, and just to uh, re-emphasize, as Tim mentioned, in the ex exclusion criteria, uh, the patients with uh, important left main disease and uh, significant impaired LV function, they were excluded from the trial. In other words, people with severe, moderate to severe ischemic cardiomyopathy, they're not really in the, in the trial. That's right, and, and I think the other thing to remember is that the patients were all given appropriate diagnostic workup mm. prior to the decision about treatment, so these patients weren't um, assumed to have coronary artery disease, they were tested for coronary artery disease, and once that diagnosis was made, and obviously the key exclusions avoided, then they were randomised. So um, it's important to know that the patients all still had um, functional testing and they also, in the vast majority, had CT coronary angiography performed as well. Mm. So what are the key limitations uh, in this particular trial, given that the results are, at the end, it's a negative trial? Yeah, so one of the, one of the key things really is about the powering of the trial. As I mentioned, they had quite a problem with enrolment and um, you can see from the number of patients that they screen to the ones that they actually enrolled, there's been a massive dropout. Um, and that always is somewhat concerning. The power calculations um, before they started the trial obviously make certain assumptions about event rates, and in actual fact the event rates were very low. 
and so the trial is going to be underpowered and on top of that we, we didn't recruit as many patients as we wanted so we're still underpowered. Um, so that, that is a real concern. Um, the other thing is that as I mentioned before that the follow-up so far is actually relatively short with a median of only 3.2 years so whether this in, um, over the course of time is actually going to pan out to be um, a different result is yet to be seen. Um, okay and how does that relate to our current practice? So I think you know in New Zealand we're in a fortunate position where the majority of patients um, get good good medical therapy um, and we, we don't see a lot of inappropriate um, investigation or procedural um, uh, things undertaken. So I think this augments our practice by reaffirming that, it, that we are um, in, in a good position to manage patients medically once we know what their functional status and once we, once we know what their ventricular function and their coronary anatomy is. Um, but, you know, I think the, the um, key thing for us is to make sure that we do investigate patients with chest pain appropriately so that we know what we're dealing with from the outset so we can make informed decisions about uh, which arm of the, of the proposed treatment strategies the patients go down. Right. Okay. Thank you very much, Tim. All right. Thank you.